Hey guys and gals, this is Cal from Dirty Weasel. If there is one universally negative thing that can be said about Bethesda games like Skyrim is that they are buggy, buggy, buggy. And that has not been fixed in the special edition. Thankfully, the Molly community has extensive experience in fixing many of these issues. This episode of the Skyrim Special Edition Modding Guide will highlight four mods that I consider to be absolutely critical additions to any Skyrim playthrough. There will be a second video later on on more bug fixes, but this is one that should be treated as the must-haves. Let's go take a look. Alright, here we are at the desktop, and I really considered calling this the Arthmore Special because that mod author has three of the four mods we're going to be covering here today, but I threw in a fourth just to add a little variety. So let's go straight to the Nexus and take a look at our first mods. You're probably not gonna be surprised by this, but is is the unofficial Skyrim Special Edition patch by Arthmore and the unofficial patch project team. So this is mod number 266 very early on and it's been downloaded a bunch because they're constantly updating this thing, constantly making improvements. And we're on to version 4.1.2a. And we'll get to the versions and what they change in just a second. Basically, this is a comprehensive bug fixing mod for the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim Special Edition. The goal of the unofficial Skyrim Special Edition patch is to eventually fix, eventually, you notice that, eventually fix every bug with Skyrim Special Edition not officially resolved by the developers to the limits of the creation kit and community developed tools, blah, 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 in one easy to go package. All right, what have they fixed? Let's just talk about that first. Uh, complete change log right here. This goes to a different link. And this is the unofficial Skyrim Special Edition patch version history. We are on version 4.1.2a. And you can see it basically just made some changes with the bad river flow data that somehow you know made it through the process. And it actually improved performance for me. Don't know why, it's just a thing. If you look back at 4.1.2, I'm going to just scroll down through and you can see all the fixes. Still scrolling, still scrolling, still scrolling, still scrolling. Boom, 4.11. This is the version that was done on October 29th of 2017. Scrolling, 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 and there we are. You get the idea. They are constantly making more and more bug fixes to this thing. So you know you're actually going to get something that has been thoroughly tested, thoroughly you know gone through to make sure they've gotten as many bugs as they possibly can with the most recent version of Skyrim. And that brings me to this point. Require Skyrim Special Edition 1.5.3. Don't get confused by this. The current edition right now is 1.5.23. In other words, 23rd version. It's the numbering system's a little strange on this as version 1.5.3 or greater and version 1.5.23 version 23 is much later than three so don't get confused by saying this what you want to get on this and it's very simple is you're going to go to the files and you're going to get the main file download that with manager super simple when i open up mod organizer and this is the mod manager of choice that i use you can use nexus mod manager you can use vortex you can use whatever you want you notice I'm on my main playthrough one. This is Dirty Weasel Media, or short for DWM. And here's the unofficial Skyrim Special Edition patch. Manual. You're going to get a BSA for the textures, a BSA for all the other stuff, in ESP and a .ini file. That all looks good. The docs just lead to you know the change logs and the readme. That looks good. Press OK. Like I said, very simple. Activate it and push it all the way to the top. Now, in the last episode, we installed the stuff for SKSE, and you can install the SKSE stuff above an official Skyrim patch, and that's what I recommend doing. This is where I get a little funky. I'm going to change my profile setting to testing. Now, this is the profile I do all my mod testing on. This is the one that I do a lot of bug checking and a bunch of other things. So, on my desktop, I have the archive for the unofficial Skyrim Special Edition patch version number 412A. Now, what I did, and I'm sure if Arthmore saw this video, and he may, he does watch my channel, if he sees this video, he's going to send me a message saying, why the hell are you showing them this? This is exactly not what I want to happen. Yes, Arthmore, I got it. 
I understand. But remember, I do testing too, and I have to have this. So inside of this, we talked about the patch for the BSA for the textures, then the normal BSA for the patch, the ESP, and the any. Okay. What I did was I took a tool like Bethesda Archive Extractor, or actually Bethesda Archive Extractor, not like it, and I took both those BSAs and I unpacked them, put them back into the a folder that I extracted the archive into, and deleted both the BSAs. And what you end up with is the docs that are just the HTML files, meshes, scripts, SEQ, sound, textures, the ESP, and the .any file. Why do I do this? Because I went ahead and packaged it back up and called it the unofficial Skyman Special Edition patch, loose files. I'm going to take that into my mod organizer. I'm going to drag it and drop it into the downloads tab. Why am I doing this? Well, for a couple different reasons. Remember, I do testing. And what I need to happen is I need to see conflicts. When you have BSAs, you're not going to be able to see the BSA conflicts inside of Mod Organizer 2 because there is no BSA conflict resolution engine inside the Mod Organizer 2 that allows me to do that. So I'm going to install the loose files into my testing profile. I want to show you something. Manual right click say data directory and it's all the stuff i showed you in the loose files version i'm gonna press okay it's gonna take longer to load in because it's not an archive anymore okie doke it's back down here at the bottom with the real version the bsa version i'm gonna highlight both of these because i want to drag them up together just to keep them straight in my brain and i'm gonna put them underneath the skse stuff but i'm going to only activate the loose files version because it's my testing profile. Activate it, and right away you see there's a conflict. This is the type of thing I want to know if there are any files that a mod may introduce that are overriding the unofficial Skyrim Special Edition patch. I need to know these things as a tester and as somebody that's presenting mods to you so I can give you the best information. When you scroll down and you wanna see which one it is, I know what it is. It is Skyrim Unbound. Unsurprisingly, that changes a bunch of different things in the quest system and how things work. So that is perfectly fine. So just so you remember that under my testing profile, under archives, I do not have any BSAs. The BSAs that were for the main patch, the BSA version, would all load before anything for Sky UI. It would load first. This is why Arthmore doesn't like you doing this. But it does allow me to you know, test things out and see conflicts. But for my Dirty Weasel Media version, there is a unofficial Skyrim edition patch that has the BSA. So these will be loaded before any loose files. We talked about that in the video where we talked about the functions of Mod Organizer. Just so you know, testing, you'll see this sometimes. I will have testing of mods or showing you different things, it'll be the loose version so I can test things out. Plugins on this. It's an ESP that is treated like an ESM. If I go ahead and just run loot on it, I'm just gonna sort it, close it, and it should update it and push it to the top because it is an ESM that is an ESP. I didn't need to run loot on that, I just did. That's part number one. Part number two that I wanna talk about has to do with conflict resolution inside of SSE edit. Because the unofficial Skyrim patch edition is an ESM, it is loaded very early in your load order, your plugins on the right tab. You may have a mod that doesn't carry over those edits as they should probably do so later on. You're going to need to be able to recognize those conflicts are those overwrites that didn't carry over the changes for the unofficial patch. So you'll need to go and use a tool like SSE edit. And you're basically just going to load all your load order in and then see what edits come out. Now, I am no expert on SSE edit. I'm working on learning how to be an expert on SSE edit so that I can teach you how to do patches. That's something I'll do in the future. But for right now, it's something that you need to be aware of for conflict resolution. All right, so that's out of the way. I'm gonna go ahead 
and move on to our next mod. And that is also by Arthmore, and it's called Cutting Room Floor. Yes, I know, it's not technically a bug fix, but I consider it a bug. It is basically content that never made it through the final editing process to make it into the game. Well, Arthmore compiled all those together and put them back in and called it Cutting Room Floor. We're talking about mod number 276 on the Skyrim Special Edition Nexus. And you can see a mod to restore several pieces of cut content in Skyrim Special Edition. If you want to see more about it, you can all read this. Now, something to be aware of. There are patches for this. Certain mods, because this is added content, need to be have their own patch for Cutting Room Floor. If you ever want to see this, under requirements, and this is a new, relatively new feature for Nexus and the new layout. Some people don't like it. I'm fine with it because it does stuff like this. Requirements, do the drop down. So this is the mod requirement. It needs the unofficial Skyrim special edition patch. We knew that. And these are the other mods that require cutting room floor. You'll see this over and over. But things like diversity and NPC overhaul, because it adds new NPCs in the game, an NPC overhaul like diversity will have its own patch. RS children overhaul room floor patch there's one for that and there's one for no snow under the roof because it adds buildings that the no snow under the under the roof didn't know about so there is a patch for that available so this is a good way to see what patches might be out there for different mods to check the requirements and just look at them this one's very simple you go to the files there's the cutting room floor we're going to download that with Manager. There is an optional file. This is for RS Children because it adds an NPC named Fro into Kynesgrove. That you may need RS Children patch for that. So this is the RS Children Cutting Room Floor patch that is available on this main page. But what you're interested in is Cutting Room Floor. Download that with Manager. Open a Mod Organizer, Cutting Room Floor. This is super simple. Manual. In a typical Arthmore fashion, you have a textures BSA, a normal BSA, the ESP, and a text file. The only thing you don't need is a text file. Activate, put it in, at the bottom, light it up. So just like before, I want this relatively high up because it is technically a bug fix, but not quite. We're just going to call it an overhaul that kind of acts like a bug fix because you're adding more content in. This is where it belongs. That's actually very simple. Plugins on this. Loot will eventually move it around. Whatever Loot wants to do with it is fine by me. There's no special instructions on that. The next mod that we're going to talk about is the Parthenax Dilemma. And this is also done by Arthmore. It is mod number 365. And this is, once again, yeah, it's kind of a quest, kind of a, a tweak to a quest. But I think it is a, a bug fix. I think it's something that you need to be having because. There's a certain point in the main question where you have to choose between Parthenax and the Blades. I never liked that choice. I thought that was stupid. I don't know why Bethesda made us choose. They're both after the same goal of killing the World Eater. Done. So this is something you need to have. Now, like I said, done by Arthmore. There is one main file to this. Download that with Manager. Back in the Mod Organizer. I have it right here, the Parthenax Dilemma. Double click to install, manual, very typical Arthmore structure, a BSA, a BSL, ESP, and a text file. We don't need the text file. We can go ahead and press OK. Since it is a bug fix, even though it's listed as a quest, I want it up top so that I make sure that it activates relatively soon. And that goes right after cutting room floor. This is my testing profile. I'll fix my uh, DWM profile later. So that is very simple. Same thing goes with this. Use loot, whatever it wants to do with your final load order, I'm golden with it. And the final mod we're going to talk about today is Modern Brawl Bug Fix by NI Scion. It is mod number 1473. Now, a little background. There was a Brawl Bug Fix back in Legendary Edition. The scripts were overladen. They were slowing things down. So NI Scion came up with the Modern Brawl Bug Fix where he wrote... I rewrote a bunch of scripts to make it work better, and it worked great. So it's completely compatible with everything. When you scroll down, you can see the conditions where if you have a magic effect 
And some mods add magic effects for different reasons, like a cloak spell that doesn't you can't really see. That magic effect would interact with the person you're brawling with and suddenly it becomes deadly, as you can see in the video on the bottom right over there. It just gets out of control. People die. NPCs that shouldn't die, die. And next thing you know, oh, that was just that was just messed. And you screwed up a quest, potentially. And I Scion fixed it. Very simple. How he do it? He re rewrote nine scripts. So when you look at this, updates the following nine scripts. Okay. Hmm. That's all it does? That's interesting. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and download it and see what we got. Now, I could download the mod manager version, but I'm going to do manual. Throwing things for a curveball here, I'm going to download it manually because I'm going to show you something. I have it on my desktop right here. Let's open up and take a look. You have a BSA and an ESP. The BSA probably contains the nine scripts that he's talking about. ESP, it doesn't do anything. See how small it is? I don't think this is going to have much information in it. Hmm. Okay, let's use Bethesda Archive Extractor and open it up. I need to first unpack that archive. I'm just going to extract it to a folder. There it is right there. And like I said, as a BSA and an ESP. I'm going to drag the BSA. You've seen me do this when I do uh, mod conversions. Drag it over to Bethesda Archive Extractor, drop it in. Inside of that BSA is the scripts, the nine scripts that he was talking about. I'm going to extract that back into this folder, but I can't delete that BSA yet. So I'm going to extract it back into the modern Brawl Bug folder that's on my desktop right there. Select that folder. And there's the scripts. Close Bethesda Archive Extractor. Now I can delete that BSA as required by any time you unpack a Bethesda archive. You need to delete that archive. will be there and the ESP won't mess with it, but I'll get to that in a second. So you have the scripts and ESP. I need to repackage that. Back into modern brawl bug fix. RAR. And there it is. So I'm going to open up Mod Organizer 2. Go to my downloads, and I'm going to drag that into my downloads. I'm going to also query that because it doesn't have the right version number because it's a RAR instead of a 7-zip. Query the info. Modern Brawl Bug Fix. Yeah, that's fine. That works. And it says I now have the right version. I can double-click to install. I'm going to show you something very important that has to do with Mod Organizer 2. Double-click to install. Manual. Right click and set data directory. You have an ESP and scripts. Scroll down, activate it, and move it up because it is a bug fix. This is a true bug fix. Put it right about there. It can go a little higher, but that's fine right there. Like I said, it had a BSA before and an ESP. Now it just has the scripts and the ESP. Hmm. I bet the ESP was a blank ESP that activated the BSA to activate the scripts. It's one of those cases where you don't really need to have an archive for such a small file, but there is a reason for doing that. That's so your archives, the BSA would load very early on. Not a big deal with this. So I think this is a better choice. This is a plus minus thing. As long as the scripts run very early and you could push these up because they are scripts, you can push these up into the realm of SKSE so they run very quickly and you can get rid of the ESP because when you open up SSE edit to double check that it is a blank ESP, we're going to select none, double click on modern brawl bug fix and the background load is finished. The only contents in that ESP is a file header and that's it. In other words, it was a ghost ESP that did nothing more than to activate a BSA. That's it. With Mod Organizer, you don't need to have that. You can actually get rid of it. In original Mod Organizer, because of the BSA archive management, it would tell you this is a worthless ESP. All it's doing is activating the BSA. You can get rid of the ESP. Because I don't have that available because archive management doesn't isn't a thing with Mod Organizer 2. I need to do it manually. 
So what we're going to do is get rid of this. We don't want to just unclick it because it doesn't clean up our right panel. What we want to do is open up the mod itself. If you check your file structure, you see I have scripts, modern brawl bug fix. I want you to come back over to your optional ESP tab. I want you to highlight the modern brawl bug fix and move it up. This is now deactivating that ESP within the file structure. So when you come back over to your file tree, all you have is the scripts and the meta.any that was generated by mod organizer. Under optional, as in hidden, is the modern brawl bug fix.esp. Right? Do you get that? So all we're getting is the scripts. And you notice the ESP goes away. So if you start getting a whole bunch of ESPs and you're getting close to your 255 limit, this is one way to do it is look for mods that do not have a true ESP in it. It's just a ghost ESP to activate a BSA. Right? So we're still getting the scripts and we're still getting the uh the bug fixes that we want because we don't need an ESP. That makes sense. That's the only exception to this. I don't recommend that normally, but because of the pluses and minuses, I think not having a BSA load before loose files is perfectly fine in this case because I want to have one less ESP cluttering in my plugins tab. I hope you learned a little something about modding your game and making it a little easier for you. That's it for now, guys. My name's Cal. I'm from Dirty Weasel, and I'm signing off.